Hi guys, so let's now take a look at information provision as a means of actually resolving consumption externalities. Now these may be negative consumption externalities when it comes to demerit goods or they may be positive consumption externalities when it comes to merit goods. So let's take a look. So a key aspect of merit and demerit goods is the lack of full information. So when you consume healthcare or education, there may be some shorter term gains, but the longer term benefits may well be misunderstood, but you don't have full access to the information in terms of what that's going to translate to in terms of lifetime earnings when it comes to education, for instance. Moreover, what about the consumption of alcohol and gambling? When uh, you actually have an uh, alcohol binge, of course you might understand the short-term consequences, but not necessarily the longer-term implications for your health. Okay, so therefore, at the heart of this, what we can see is providing better information allows for more informed choices. And that's what is really proposed when it comes to providing better information provision. Now, this has been used in a sort of shop campaign basis when it's come to tobacco. Uh, and you may well have seen some of those adverts. Uh, but within the NHS more recently, they've launched a uh, One You campaign where you undertake a survey which actually assesses your lifestyle and your fitness and your health and uh, diet and so on, and then gives you a ranking. So it can really utilize many different ways in terms of actually doing this. Uh, you'll also see in the supermarkets, of course, uh, the traffic light system used on food labelling, which is also re very relevant. Okay, so there's a number of advantages to such a system. Uh, really, it's, it's about trying to actually achieve the social optimal level. That is restricting out output of or uh, the quantity consumed of demerit goods and making sure that you do consume enough merit goods. Um, this may translate to improved health and life expectancy. That can, of course, be a bad thing for governments, though, because it may well mean uh, more expenditure necessary to actually support, uh, support that demographic. Uh, in addition to that, we can also see that uh, people will be able to make freer, more informed choices. Uh, and that's, that's got to be a good thing, really. So if you think about the diagrammatics for this, we've got a uh, merit good here and we've got a demerit good here. Let's start with our merit good. So we can see we want outcome to be at P star, Q star, our socially efficient level of outcome. Why is that the case? Well, here we only have partial information. So I've just put down MPB. PI as partial information so that not all of the information is necessarily understood. But yet when that information campaign is very, very effective, then it can help to shift uh, individuals' marginal private benefit and their understanding uh, and benefit derived from consuming a given good out to the right to this point, MPB, full information, FI. So there we go. Uh, thus, we can see we achieve a more social optimal level of out outcome, and that will help to reduce uh, the uh, market failure that's actually taking place. For a demerit good, it's the opposite way around, of course. Here we're trying to reduce consumption. Let's just put in those arrows. We can just show that we've shifted uh, these this curve to the right. Meanwhile, we're shifting this curve to the left-hand side. So here, uh, consumption where it's over-consumed, as we know for demerit goods. So we're at P1, Q1, but the information campaign, if it's effective, will reduce uh, the level of consumption and reduce that marginal benefit in line with P star, Q star. Okay, now there are a number of disadvantages to uh, such an approach though. So you've got to consider how will uh, this information be provided and what is going to be most effective in terms of the way in which that information is provided. There's also the efficiency argument with which you can actually target the consumers that you want to target as well. So how well can you actually target that demographic uh, who are actually over consuming this good? Now, if the good has uh, very addictive qualities as well, then how effective is it going to be? Well, less so you would think. Okay, what about the clarity of the message? Will it be understood as well. So there's various issues there regarding the way in which the campaign is actually conducted. Um, 
So you've also got to think who particularly is the target audience as we said there, how are you going to get those guys in particular, what about the cost implications, who's going to be paying for this, so that's another, uh, another issue that must be considered. Uh, is there going to be an opportunity cost in addition to that? Uh, well, if it's publicly funded, certainly there is. Uh, so uh, finally, how will you evaluate the success of this campaign? So how will we know for sure that it is actually achieving these, uh, these sorts of outcomes? And that can be difficult to actually uh, monitor and evaluate. Okay, guys, great stuff. See you next time.